What's up? Well, Bilal, I know you've been calling for a lot of fights with a lot of top five opponents since your last win, but now you're fighting Sean Brady here in Abu Dhabi. So now that is the week of the fight. What are the emotions leading up to this fight? Mm, feeling good. Feeling great. Had a good camp. Um, I just feel like emotionally it's just another hurdle I got to get over, another guy that I got to prove to the doubters that I'm the best guy in the division. And Saturday night, I prove it. Sean is obviously an undefeated high-level uh, welterweight prospect and I remember I, I spoke with Paul Craig when he fought Jamal Hill and he said who at the time Jamal was undefeated he said it's dangerous being undefeated fighter in the UFC because you haven't tasted defeat yet uh, do you agree with that statement and do you do you think Sean is maybe like overconfident knowing he doesn't have that L on his record uh, you know, I, I've been in the UFC. I've been undefeated before, and I, I know what it feels like. Obviously, he probably has all the confidence in the world. He's just coming off a big win against the top six guys. So the way that he tried to call it out, call it out on Twitter, acting like he could beat me and all this other stuff, that's what motivates me more because when people do that, when people talk trash, the last three guys that I fought, they were all more so very nice, very respectful, the nicest guys in the world, Daniel Maya, Wonder Boy, Luke, like so nice. So it feels good to have somebody that I don't like, that, all right, you call it out, you called me out, you're, you're saying I'm running, you're saying I'm doing this, blah, 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 trying to all talk all this big game. Um, now all that talk, you got you to gotta, you gotta show me now Saturday. And, you know, be careful what you wish for. Do you actually not like him, or is this just you're, you're preparing to fight him and this is the mindset you're in? No, no, no. I mean, I was uh, with a couple other guys. There's some guys like Wonder Boy. I was trying to figure out some way I, I should hate him, man. There's, there has to be something about him that I don't like, and I couldn't find anything. With, uh, with Sean, it just comes naturally just because of the way he was just talking, and I hate Philly. I hate Philly cheesesteaks. I hate the Eagles. I hate everything about Philadelphia. I mean, obviously, you fought guys like Damian Maya who like kind of exemplify grappling here in MMA. So how would you compare Sean's skill set to your past opponents? Um, I think I've, I've seen it all already with what he's going to bring to the table. I fought wrestlers. I fought grapplers. Him and Damian Maya both have the same wrestling coach. Uh, and obviously, there's a difference. He's, the, he's younger than him. He brings a little bit more striking to the game than him. But the guys I train with, they're – they're another level. In Chicago, I train with amazing wrestlers. This camp, I train with the, the best wrestlers, the best grapplers, the best stylistic guys for this fight. And every single fight I come into, I bring a different version of myself. And every camp you go through, you learn a little bit something else. It's like, for Wonder Boy, I did so much striking. I did so much wrestling, and it leveled me up in those areas. For Maya, I did so much grappling, did so much jiu-jitsu, it leveled me up in those areas. For Luke, I did the same thing. And I think I've, I've gone through those camps where he hasn't gone through those camps where it's a different style here, a different style there, a different style there. Uh, I think that the way that I fought, the people that I fought, the things that I have showed in there, uh, he hasn't done any of that. What was it like having Habib in your camp for this fight? It was amazing. It was the guy that, you know, you look up to, a guy that I think of as the GOAT, the best fighter to ever do it. And I'm training side by side with who I think is the best lightweight in the world, and uh, Makachev. And he's not small. He's not, he's not a small guy. And if you even look at the other guys in the room, like their whole room is full of killers. And I'm looking at these guys like, oh, this kid's 20 years old. He's not in the UFC. And uh, the way he's going, he's amazing. He's a, he's. Their grappling is good. Their striking is good. They're, every single day, every single one of them is not trying to lose a round, not trying to lose a second. So it just brought a different competitive, competitiveness to the practices, a competitiveness to myself, and it changed my mindset. So knowing that there's guys like that out there, I'm like, bro, I need to get this title and get the fudge out of this game. Well, to kind of add more gasoline to the fire for Sean, we asked him about you, uh, you having Habib in your corner, and his response was, Habib's not undefeated as a cornerman. So I would like your response to that. That, that has nothing to do with it. That was, a, that was a stupid response. That's, see, that's why I hate Philadelphia, like, because they say stupid things. Bilal? What's Salam up, bro? Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum salam, bro. Um, I know you've spoken quite a lot about uh, your last month or so of training with Habib, so I don't want you to ask necessarily about that, but I do want to know if you could say the most important thing or the most important lesson you've learned in the past month or so from being around those guys, what would you say it is? I think the best thing I've learned about being around those guys is the religious aspect of it. You know, 
we're, we're training and then we're going straight to prayer right afterward. That was the most beautiful thing because, you know, in America, uh, you know, I train at uh, Valley Flow Strike and Chicago Fight Team. There's, there's not a lot of Muslims that I'm training with. So to be able to train with these guys, pray next to these guys, eat next to these guys, to see the, how they brought me into the group. Like we all don't speak the same language. A lot of them only speak Russian, they don't speak English, but I read faces, I read energy, and it was all love with them. There was no ego, there was no like, let me try to embarrass you. You usually go to gyms and it's like, I'm not in the UFC, but let me kill this UFC fighter to show him that I'm better than him. There's none of that there. So it just showed me what, like I don't consider them a team, I consider them brothers. And now that they brought us into the family, uh, it was amazing and like it's something that, you know, I'll, I'll always remember no matter what. So people seem to think that you're uh, a guy that wrestles all the time. And I can understand why, because in the most recent fights, you have shown that. But you are pretty decent on the feet, too, as you've shown against Lima. I'm better than decent. <laughs> you're pretty decent on the feet, too, as you've shown against Lima. Um, do you think you're going to have to lean towards that stand-up, seeing, seeing as though you've got like a grappler versus grappler matchup on the weekend? No, I think I could take this fight wherever I want to go. Uh, I think that I had probably had the best fight IQ in the division, in the UFC. And I think that when he thinks that I'm going to strike, I'm going to wrestle. When he thinks I'm going to wrestle, I'm going to strike. I'm not going in there with the mindset that I'm only going to do this or he's going to only do this. I could do anything I want. And when I'm in there, it's, it's my world. And just finally, you've got a really good win streak at the moment. You've beaten, I believe, some of the most ranked fighters in, in the welterweight division. Do you want a title shot next, or is a fight against Colby or, and, or Hamza interest you? Uh, you never want to look past anybody, so like, I'm concentrating on Brady right now. But obviously, to me, Kamaru obviously deserves a title shot next. But it all depends on if, how healthy he is coming back from there, if he wants to take a little more time off. He is going to take a little bit of break. I don't think anybody in the division deserves it but me. But I still got to go out there Saturday and put on a performance that's going to make the UFC give it to me. Like I, I got to go out there, finish Sean Brady, and then they're going to be like, all right, we can't deny this guy. He has the longest win streak. He's, he's the only guy in the division fighting ranked guys. Like This is going to be my fifth top ten guy that I'm fighting, and there's nobody else fighting these guys. This guy's undefeated. Uh, he's not coming off a loss. All these guys are fighting guys coming off losses. I just beat Luke, who was on a seven-fight win streak, and he knocked me out. So I had to go through that. So I've gone through it. I paid in full. So I deserve it. I earned it. And Saturday night, I prove it. Thank you, and good luck. Well, I'm here. Well, I'm here. Uh, Islam Mahaji was just here, and he said that uh, Habib is very uh, emotional when he's in your corner. Did he corner you for any, in the, for any sparring so far? And what, what was it like? Yeah, that's why it made me want, want him in my corner because, you know, when you're in the cage, you're sparring, and it's a different feel. It's not like a regular gym where everybody's on the mat sparring at the same time. No, you're in there, it's a fight. Like, he's in one corner. My coach, Lewis Taylor, who was with me, shout out to Lou, was with me, uh, cornering me on the other side. And in between rounds, they're giving you advice. And then he'll come to your corner too and give you some advice like do this, this, and this. And just the knowledge, the things that he saw, the vision that he had, I was like, dude, He's, a, he's good everywhere. He's good. He sees it all, even as a coach. Uh, he's just not a fighter. So I was like, bro, I got to have you in my corner. He's like, for sure, I'm going to have you there. And for me, I think that the connection that my three corner coaches had, uh, him, Lewis Taylor, and Mike Valley, like, they all clicked. There was no egos or anything like that. So I think it's going to be a perfect corner. So Islam also said, once you do something wrong, he goes crazy. <laughs> yeah, th that's the beautiful thing about it. You know, you watch um, like the last dance with Michael Jordan and the, the Bulls and how his teammates would say, oh, he would always yell at us. He would always do this. He would he's like, he wants greatness out of his teammates, though. And that's what I think that Khabib is. The greatest people want greatness out of their guys. He sees it in you. He doesn't want you to, it's not about him or his ego or anything. He just wants you to achieve your goals and everybody on that team can be a champion and he knows that but he just wants you to do all the right things all the things that you need to do to to get there there's no he doesn't really care he's always on his phone you know you have those coaches that you know he has he's achieved everything he's a champion he has all the money in the world he has this this and this he doesn't need to be here but for him to give us his time and knowledge um we have to show him the respect to to give him our effort our blood our sweat our tears and that's what we gave him this camp Thank you. Hi, Bilal. Hi, Bilal. What's up, brother? Hi. 
uh, last few fights have have been five rounds main event and the camp would have been different for those uh, this is a three rounder how different was the camp and whether from the first minute of this fight whether you would be able to put a pace against uh, Sean Brady yeah it's it's a different pace you you don't want to sit there and sit back and read a, a little bit too much now it's just, we go 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 and we wanted to hit certain amounts of heart rate during sparring. We wanted to get going right away during sparring and not sit back as much. So we all figured that out. Um, I think that we're right where we need to be. And Saturday night, can't wait. Thanks, Blair. Uh, um, what's your expectations about the crowd on Saturday? Do you feel like you're home here? I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. What's your expectations about the, about the fans on Saturday night? Do you feel like you're home here? Yeah, yeah, I feel like it's home here, man. It's been amazing. The hospitality I've got in uh, Abu Dhabi and Dubai, the people, the energy, it's like they've all been way too nice. And being from America, everybody's out for themselves. Everybody's always looking out for themselves. Everybody's trying to take something that you have. Here, everybody's trying to give you something that they have. Everybody's trying to give you their, their time, their energy, uh, show you things. And it's like being here for five weeks, you, you start realizing what, like, this is, this is what – life should be this is what uh people should be like and it makes you want to move here because uh it just like just the the comfort here the 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 knowing that you know i could leave my wallet at the mall and be there tomorrow and all my money will still be there uh it's, it's there's nothing like it thank you yeah just wanted to get your have a, yeah just wanted to get your prediction on the trilogy between leon edwards and kamar usman uh, if the the trilogy, I think that, I mean, we saw it in this fight. We saw what Camaro did to him. We saw that Camaro was on his way to victory. But it's the fight game. And anything can happen in the fight game. One zig when you should have zagged and you go to sleep. I think that for Leon Edwards, he's going to have to mentally, you know, go through the trenches right now in camp because he broke in there. He showed it. He had his head down, wasn't looking at his coaches. And... When you when the world sees it, it's it shows us something that you could be broken. So if I'm Kamaro, you're gonna go in there right away, take him down right away, do the same thing you did in there, and I think that he'll do that. But we, you just never know how somebody comes out comes back from a knockout because you don't know how your brain's gonna react, you know how your body's gonna react, you don't know if it's gonna make you hesitate in there. It all depends on the people he has around him, the training he has, the coaches he has around him, because you don't want to go straight back to training. You don't want to go straight back to to, to fighting hard, sparring hard right away. Like I said, I've been knocked out before. I know what it feels like to have that. You want to get it right back, especially because you're dominating that fight. You're, you're on your way to victory. Uh, mentally, you, you can tell what he's going through. But it's all about just patience. Uh, you look at Freddie Roach. He made Manny Pacquiao take a whole year off of sparring or anything uh, because in the end, health before wealth, it's, about, it's all about your brain. After fighting, there's a life. So for him, it's just all about coming back at the right time when mentally you're ready, physically you're ready, and your body's healthy. Did you meet Hasbala? Oh, yeah, yeah. I got, I got a one-two. Uh, you know, my jaw is still freaking sore from that right now. They need to come out with T-shirts, the three-piece in a soda. Yeah, he hits hard. <laughs> Dude, he's tough. He, he just, he's, he's sneaky with it. Uh, you know, I'm thinking we're going to get a little picture, and all of a sudden, bam, he comes out of nowhere and smacks you with it. But, uh, you know, he's cool. He's such a, such a good guy. It's crazy how much of a superstar he is because every single person in the world wants to take a picture of him, see him, and just the, like the brotherhood he has with the, the team was so cool to see when they were playing soccer and things like that. He's sparring with these guys, kicking these guys. He put uh, Loose Taylor in a chokehold. Uh, so it was cool to see. Did you tap? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> um, you mentioned a few minutes ago about wanting to move here. Now, you've got much to accomplish, but again, it's a big step moving out here. Once you've created a legacy for yourself, do you wish to sort of bring it here? Do you have any plans thinking, right, I might open an academy for myself, pass down the knowledge that I have? Is that something you'd want to start here in Abu Dhabi? Yeah, I mean, that would be amazing. I think that even in the, the gyms I train at in Chicago, I do a lot of coaching. Uh, I've been blessed with some of the best coaches in the world, learning from some of the best fighters in the world. And, you know, you pay it forward to the, to the younger generation. So I would love that. If there's any, uh, anybody out here, businessmen out here that want to support a poor American boy like 
Bala Muhammad, bring me to Dubai and house me and give me a business, I'm down. Well, I'm curious what you uh, make of the UFC's no, new policy against betting on the fights, um, either as your own or your team's. Uh, being a Muslim, I don't gamble, so I think that they're just uh, trying to make the the sport and the the UFC. He's trying to make everybody Muslim. Everybody needs to convert to Islam, and we'll be all be good here. <laughs> all right, thank you. Yes. Uh, there's a lot of rumors going around that Jared Gordon kicks your ass every time he's <laughs> Who, uh, no comment. I don't know where you're getting those rumors from. It's probably from the same camera guy that brought out the Draymond Green story. Uh, but I'm going to find you. Thank you, guys. Hold on. Can you just post yourself?